some YouTubers out there who need some Jesus. That's all I'm going to say. There was all kinds of interesting things that was um, taking place on social media yesterday. And today is July 1st. Um, these interesting things were taking place on the last day of June. Of course it was because 2020 hasn't been crazy enough. You know what I mean? Like, I'm briefly, briefly going to address some of it. I absolutely hated high school. My freshman year was horrible. I hated high school. I, I sat on the, the border of between a cheerleader because I had done dance my whole life. And then I was like really into Gwen Stefani, no doubt. And I was really into like skateboarding. I was that chick. I was like a skateboarder chick. I had like pink hair. So my, the point of this conversation is for me to see all this drama going on with all these YouTubers, it just reminds me of high school and how much I would never, ever, ever want to go back. I'm really glad YouTube is finally holding some of these people accountable. When I'm doing this, I'm going to be using a full face of Wet n Wild. My dogs just keep barking today. I just... Everybody needs Jesus. The entire... Like 2020 needs so much Jesus. Like, and I'm not even religious. Although I was following this like really gothic chick on Instagram and she posted this thing that said Satan was the light and I was like, mm, might be a little too far for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. now I'm going to use Wet n Wild, everything spot over the store. Anything that I like, I will put in parentheses in the description box below with all of the products that I've used. So I'm actually gonna go in, it's been um, hot in Vegas today, it's 99 degrees. Actually, that's not really that hot for Vegas, honestly. And we're in July, it should be like 110, 150 now, honestly, and it's 99 for the next couple of days, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So um, I have to run some errands after this. So uh, I'm gonna have some makeup on my face, um, and since I'll be out in my Jeep beep, beep I am going to use, this is an SPF moisturizer. So I use this when I, days I know I'm gonna be outside. It's a SPF 30, it's Eucerin Daily Protection Face Lotion. Um, it's kind of, it's really no, very light scent. It's like, it's, it's kind of medicated, I guess is the way. I like stuff that smells medicated, but it's very, very light. Um, the reason I, don't use other brands of SPF is um, my face is so sensitive, so damn sensitive. So I have to use stuff that's like very mild and very, 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 very gentle. So primer, I had the jelly primer um, that they make. And it actually ended up going like bad. So I have this water drop primer in rose or rose if you want to be fancy AF. I like being fancy personally. So it's kind of like a thicker cream, I guess you could say. It's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but we're going to go for it. How, how does it smell? I don't know, a little medicated, I guess. That worries me, just being a makeup brand. Like, Eucerin's one thing, because it's being used as an SPF, but this is, I mean, it has a very, very faint rose scent, but it's more, a little bit medicated than rose. Oh, it's a little strong. It's a little strong. I think that just the theme for today is Everybody, including myself, needs some Jesus. Because I can't breathe, you know? Oh my God, that's gonna flare my asthma, boo. That's gonna flare my asthma. Okay, makeup-wise, oh my God, I, I don't even know. I have a few things here for makeup um, that I'm gonna try. I haven't really used all of this, I'm gonna be honest. So I have, I have Wet n Wild Photo Focus like it's like a stick porcelain. Usually I can't use stick foundations because it tends to like break my skin out really bad. 
I also have um, Photo Focus Foundation and it's like the liquid. Um, this one I have worn before and it has caused me breakouts, so I'm, I might shy away from this one. Um, I have a color corrector for redness that I might use, maybe like under my eyes. I have a little bit of redness and splotchiness up there. Freckles. Um, and then I have this cushion foundation, which also has SPF in it. And I think I did use this one and it wasn't bad. So the color that I purchased in this one is Soft Ivory. I do think I'm going to shy away from using this just because when I have a breakout, man, it's, it doesn't go away for weeks because it's like it turns into horrible like cystic acne. I've had that problem forever. Um, this is Featherweight Finish Green um, Mega Cushion Color Corrector for redness. I don't know why I'm taking my hand. I just, I just am. I don't know. It smells weird. It also smells like a little medicated. I don't know. I don't like the chemically smell. It kind of makes me nervous. That did brighten up my under eye though. So if it kills me, at least I look good when I die. I'm just going to try this. Um, this is the foundation, foundation stick in porcelain aka white AF. It's crazy though because like if I go outside and like stood in the sun for like 10 minutes, literally, I would turn like olive straight up because of my Cherokee jeans. I'm almost half Cherokee and uh, my natural hair color is like black but it's been blonde forever, literally forever. Okay, I like the foundation stick better. I just hope it doesn't cause massive breakouts. It does go on a little heavy, so I'm just making sure I don't apply, like overly apply. I don't want it to be like a thick foundation. This is medium to buildable coverage. Um, I like e.l.f. better, the e.l.f. one that I use um, on my other full face, but this is not bad, honestly. Although I am concerned why these three have like a, a little bit of a chemical smell so I don't know boo do what you want with that information all right I got a um what is this concealer for um, corrections in fair neutral and whoa that has a chemical smell too what's the deal here I don't know I don't know what's going on but Jesus saves like is it alcohol like like rubbing alcohol I don't know I don't know but it's gonna trigger my asthma it's strong holy crap probably gonna burn my face off just watch it's gonna like melt off I'm gonna be honest that is not that's like very light coverage and <clears throat> it's not gonna work for me do you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna go in with my kimchi um, I don't even know what color this is. It's very light. Lightest beige. I love the applicator on this. It's like a brush applicator. Oh, precision all the way. I can't help it though, especially on my under eyes. I need I need something to be bright. I think I'm having like an allergic reaction to the makeup though. I don't know if you guys can see there's like some little bumps hanging out right there. Oh my god. I have to, I'm gonna have to take this off. I'm getting an allergic reaction to this. Um, it's very bumpy. I don't know what is going on. I don't know if it's the primer or if it's this, but um, I'm getting welts on my cheek. So, Crystal will be right back. Please stand by. That's what I get. That's what I get for calling on Jesus. That's what I get. So let's talk about what just happened. I didn't think I was going to be one of those to have like a, a makeup fail. You know, not like that. You know what I mean? Like, I had no idea. 
I don't know what caused it. Uh, these are all going to have to go into the trash now. <sighs> um, basically, I caught, got this like weird... It was like on this area. Um, welt. And once I like took my makeup off and washed my face, it completely went back away. So... I think I just started to get like an allergic reaction and caught it. Um, you can still see some bumps in here. <sighs> Alrighty, so we're not going to be using all um, Wet n Wild products today. <laughs> um, I'm going to just use some Old Faithful stuff. Oh hey, I'm filming. Oh shoot, sorry. It's alright, you want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> How's it going? I called the worst moment. Actually, so what's so bad is like it's funny you called because I'm doing a full face of Wet n Wild. Oh really? And I've never done. I, I mean, like I've used their eyeshadows and like a few other things that are really good. Their highlights are really good. Uh huh. But I used their primer and one of their foundation sticks with a color corrector and another th like full coverage foundation sponge thing. And I got an allergic reaction. <gasps> like, I was sitting here and I looked in the camera and I was like, had these huge, like, welts forming on my cheeks. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, it's so bad. Are you okay? I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, everything's 100% fine. You know what oh I mean? Oh my god, Jesus. Maybe Lord. it's just the remnants of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson haunting me. You know what I mean? Oh my god, for real. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll well, call you when I'm done. Okay, girl. Bye. Bye. So I just used, um, actually, I like the blush as long as it doesn't cause a reaction. You know what I mean? Um, color icon in pearlescent pink. And then the bronzer that I used was um, Sunset Striptease. Ooh, not bad. It was blendable. Honestly, I think that the blush and bronzer. Wet n Wild is better than the e.l.f. one. So I did do a nose contour too. So I have a few highlights. I actually love uh, Wet n Wild's highlighters. I got this when it first came out, which is Moon Tears, and it has the skull on it. This highlighter is beautiful, and it's a loose highlighter, and it has um, the skull inside. And then this one's not bad. This was a Wet n Wild collection they came out with called I'm So Lit, and I'll show you the difference between the two. So I'm So Lit is here. And then Moon Tears, which I think is the brighter one. And then I have the highlighting um, jelly. This is in color Blaze and Glaze. This is what it looks like. It's kind of thick, y'all. It's kind of thick. So this I'm a little nervous to be using because it's so thick. Honestly, this would be great if you mixed it with like lotion and made like a highlighting lotion, so I'm not going to use that today. And then I have the liquid highlighter in, what is this? Gilded Glow. That one's actually really pretty. It's not as thick, so I like that one. So Gilded Glow looks a little tan for my skin, so I don't think I can use it as like a face highlighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my classic favorite, which is Moon Tears. Now I still like a louder highlighter than this, honestly. But this will do for today. Okay, I have Oily oily lids um so if i don't set this quickly it's going to become a hot mess and it's going to start creasing so i have a couple of palettes but i do have this gigantic wet and wild one and to be honest i've never used it yet it's literally brand new so just really quickly i think i'm going to go in with this super light beige color there's some fallout for sure and just set this, ah, oh, it's already creasing. This studio gets hot too sometimes with all these studio lights on. Okay, now that we have survived, 
the allergic reaction or whatever's going on with that. Who is ready for some uh, creeps and cosmetic, huh? First decisions, I have three palettes. I have the Pac-Man palette, which is really cute, but I feel like not a ton of options as far as what to do with it in the end. This was like very witchy. It's a purple palette from Wet n Wild. I haven't even opened it yet. And then obviously this big one. I think I'm gonna go with this big one. I don't know if they are still making this or not. I feel so bad because like every time I do a look, it's like dark, but I do think I'm gonna go in with like, I don't know, I really like this bottom row. So I think I'm gonna get crazy and do something like purple, green, bluish, something like that. So when I look at a color palette, sometimes I feel like you just start painting and like you don't even think about what you're doing. So I'm gonna start with lighter colors and build them up. That's just what I do. So I think I'm gonna start with this mint green and just start building it from there. Just wanted to test the waters, you know what I mean? Like, what am I getting myself into now that I almost had an allergic reaction? Okay, that blended pretty good so far, so I think we can we can carry on. Marie Laveau, mm -hmm. voodoo priestess from 1794 to 1881 inspired by, of course, American Horror Story. But I have been following the Voodoo Queen of New Orleans for literally ever. So what the Voodoo Queen was most known for was she would hold these public events where she would invite the people of Louisiana to come in and see what she did. She would hire actors and actresses to basically put on this theatrical performance where they would pretend like they were being possessed and like Marie Laveau, her energy or her voodoo magic would be able to remove that possession from them. So it wasn't just her being you know, whimsical, magical, a mystic. It was also that she knew how to draw the people into her. So she was also known for um, making charms for people out of like sometimes rabbit's feet. Um, she would create these charms using her voodoo spells and magic and a lot of people would purchase them because they truly believed in the power that um, Marie Laveau claimed that she possessed. So if Marie Laveau was this African voodoo priestess, how in the world did she end up in Louisiana of all places? Well, her father was actually a white man who lived in um, Louisiana. He was a farmer, which was very popular at that time. And her mother, was a black woman who had come over from um, Africa and she was actually a slave originally. The Creole people of Louisiana and that was her mother. So Marie Laveau was born in the French Quarter which we all know is one of the most haunted areas of Louisiana. She was born September 10th of 1794. So man, that was a while ago. See, this look started out all like green and happy and all of a sudden it was dark. So Marie Laveau's mother was actually a mistress when her father uh, and, and her mother had her and like conceived her. So she ended up growing up wealthy because of her father. He owned a plantation down in Louisiana, which was also rare for that time because mo most of the time if someone got a black woman pregnant, it was hush hushed, right? Like. They didn't want to tell anybody what was going on. You were sort of shamed upon when you were a white man, or female for that matter, having a child interracially. And that goes for my family too, as Native American. For some reason, the audio cut out when I was um, filming this, when I was talking about this. But I was obsessed to find out that um, Marie's mother was not only black from Africa, but her roots also stemmed as Choctaw um, Indian. So that's amazing that she had some really deep spiritual roots, not only from Africa, but having Native American roots as well. So she had some serious spiritualism going on. Not only does she have Native American blood running through her, but she also has her mother African roots. So no wonder she was as powerful and spiritual as she was. Now, as she grew up, she decided she wanted to be a hairstylist. Now, although later in life, Maria ended up you know, becoming known for her voodoo powers understand that she was a 
devout Catholic who attended mass almost daily. Now that shocks people usually because they think of voodoo and they think all the dark, icky, bad stuff. But nobody ever comes to think, oh, maybe maybe they weren't all bad. Maybe voodoo's not all bad. And as far as I know, what I've studied about voodoo, it's a lot like witchcraft, which means it's all about the intent, right? So if you have bad intentions, of course it's going to be scary and dark. And if you don't have bad intentions, it won't be it won't be dark and scary. I just went in and cleaned up with a wipe. I'm gonna go back in with some more P. Louise um, to create a cut crease. I don't do cut creases all the time. And the main reason is because not only do I have um, oily eyelids, but I also have um, semi-hooded eyelids. I have my whole life. And um, I don't think cut crease looks good on my particular hooded eyelids, so. What you guys are seeing is a, a rare thing. So I'm just carving it out right now. So the one thing, if you do have hooded eyelids and you wanna do a cut crease at home, you kinda of have to cheat it a little bit more than most people would with normal eyelids. So I go up higher than a normal person would with their cut crease. So even after she grew up on her father's plantation, she became a hairstylist. She was still you know, a devout Catholic. She decided that she was going to get married in August 4th of 1819 and she married a carpenter. At this time Haiti was going through a revolution and there were a lot of Haitian immigrants in Louisiana. So that was how she actually originally met him was because he was an immigrant from Haiti. They both went to New Orleans and they decided to live together in the French Quarter and start their life. So apparently in St. Louis Cathedral, um, which is in New Orleans, their marriage certificate, marriage license, is still posted to this day. So I thought that was a really cool piece of information. So now at this point, people are already starting to pick up that there's something just a little bit different about um, Marie and who she is. She's obviously definitely an African-American woman, but she has lighter skin. They almost called it caramel skin, and she had a golden hair color to her. Um, she was very um, attractive to people, so when she met anybody, they always remembered her. So eventually, Marie had children with Paris, which was her Haitian immigrant husband, and they seemed like they were pretty much just the perfect couple. Everybody in Louisiana had known them. Now, at this time, she had slowly started to um, learn about her roots in voodoo, um, wasn't quite practicing it yet, was still a totally devout Catholic, and was still 100% um, a hairstylist. Now in 1824, although they looked like this perfect couple, out of nowhere suddenly Marie was announcing that um, Paris had been presumed dead and went missing, and no one really knew where he was. She started calling herself a widow. Now apparently there was evidence, I don't know what kind of evidence, but apparently at the time, people thought that maybe Paris had left her for another woman, which back in the 1800s, that's a huge no-no. Like that could ruin your reputation as an aristocrat, which she was because her father owned a plantation. So she just started going around telling everybody that she was a newly um, widowed wife and that he was dead and no one knew what happened to him and they couldn't find him. What a boss move. Like what a mood. Like, my husband's an idiot. Um, no idea where he went. Can't find him anywhere. So, we're just gonna say he's dead. I'm gonna use that one next time. It was, it was sad either way. Like, if he left, fine. If he didn't actually leave, whatever. She was still left to raise their kids alone. He was never, never came back to be part of their lives. So she was on her own, um, you know, working hard to try to provide for her children. This is like a shiny gold. I'm gonna try to, whoa, I thought it was gold. It's like yellow, hello, yellow. Now this is the part of the story where Marie starts to become known as the voodoo priestess of New Orleans. So she's still practicing as an actual hairstylist, but she slowly over time starts to develop this really rich, wealthy clientele and these rich aristocrat white women are basically paying her not only to do their hair, 
but I, it's more like a therapy session. You know what I'm saying? Like these white women are like pouring their heart's desires, secrets out to her, which I'm gonna be honest, girl, that's why I stopped being a hairstylist was because I was drained every day from having to hear people and their life stories and all of their problems. So I understand where she was coming from. But the, here's the twist, here's the smart thing that she did. She gave them elements, which was spells, um, good luck charms, hexes, um, potions, ways to keep the bad people away and only bring in the good fortune. She basically sold herself as a priestess, like, oh, I hear all your problems, I have something to solve that. Oh, I hear all your problems, I have something to solve that. And so she literally made bank off of these white aristocrat women. She was smart, in my opinion. She was like totally just an entrepreneur, 100%. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking maybe she's a bad person because she's doing this. Not necessarily. She's still a devout Catholic. She's still going to mass. And she's actually um, doing procedures like going in with people who are very ill or uh, people that are in prison and praying with them and over them for their freedom, success, and relief of their demons. So she actually paid it forward a lot to the community too as well. She ministered men that were on death row. I mean, she did a lot of stuff for people, like good things for people. Now in 1826, enters a new husband. Uh oh, here we go. Now it's interesting because she never re-entered into a legal marriage with him. Um, she only went into common law marriage. So if you don't know what common law is, um, Colorado has it, the state of Colorado where I'm from. Common law marriage means that you have lived with someone usually for like three to five years and um, the state views you as married because you have combined your assets. Now people get screwed sometimes when common law, not every state has it, Nevada does not have it. But um, a lot of people get screwed in that way because they'll go to break up and whoever they've been living with for five or six years takes them to court and they are legally um, allowed to get 50% of everything. So common law is no joke. It just depends on if it's where you live. You should look up the laws where you live. So anyway, she went into this common law marriage with this man, but obviously she loved him because they ended up having like several children together on top of the other two that she had from Paris who, who just disappeared and nobody ever saw again. Maybe she killed him. I mean, like, I don't want to look at Marie Laveau as dark, but like maybe she like got sick of his and like she just like got rid of him voodoo style. Also, big mood Marie, big mood. This girl and I would have been best friends, okay? Okay, I'm Native American, you're Native American, let's be friends. Marie Laveau, let's be friends. She had 15 children by this man. Woo, that is it's exhausting. But that was very common and still is common for Catholic families to have really giant big families, right? Now, the interesting thing with this is she still practiced hairstyling and hairdressing, but it was mainly out of her home. So now the clients were traveling to her, which actually, because she had 15 kids plus the other two, 17 children total, no way, no way. Um, so she ends up having all of these people start coming to her house for her voodoo practices. And that's when she starts making bank. This is also when she cues in more than just, you know, the rich white class. She has every class coming to her for breaking a curse, helping with a spell, love potions, hexes, good luck charms, you name it. She literally had everyone in Louisiana eating out of the palm of her hand. And she had done perfectly. She'd set this perfect entrepreneur lifestyle up for her. Now through the rest of her life, she preached Catholicism. She told everyone they needed to, you know, go confess their sins to, to God and go to church. And um, she preached that for the entire duration of her living. So in my opinion, she couldn't have been all bad like people say. But I think that when there comes power like that, there comes fear. By 1830, she was literally one of several major predominant voodoo queens in Louisiana. She had basically made the fear removed from it by, by combining her Catholicism beliefs and traditions 
mixed with her voodoo African priestess ways. <clears throat> she used holy water, incense, statues, saints, and even Christian prayers. So, I mean, I'm sure people saw that and thought, oh, it's not that scary. She's just praying. She's just praying. Now, at this point, because of the Haitian roots, not only is she practicing voodoo, but she's also practicing some hoodoo. She did recognition of spiritual forces or mischievous, so that's like basically exorcisms or ridding your home of like bad energy and entities. She would learn, she would teach people how to break connections with bad spirits. These are spirits that follow you around and that are mischievous. Now there were several other voodoo queens that were also in Louisiana, but eventually over time, she pushed all of them out of business and became the only one, the only voodoo queen of Louisiana. This is when she started holding these ceremonies where she had actors and actresses pretend like they were being possessed by demons and people were just in awe of who she was and the show that she was able to put on. It even was mysteriously said that she may have ran some sort of voodoo hoodoo operations out of the White House at the time. She was doing a lot of predominant traveling and became not only the voodoo queen of Louisiana but basically of the East Coast. She also became a liaison between white women and black men. So I think predominantly people that wanted to have interracial relationships because in the 1800s, that was a huge no-no. You just didn't do it. Now, obviously she's selling ambulance, good luck charms, potions, spells. This girl's making some money, okay? Like, which she needed it, 17 kids. I don't even know how she did it, that's insane. She also was able to see the future, tell fortunes and speak with the dead. So she was making money even on like the psychic side of paranormal. Now, yes, it sounds all good, but there were a lot of people that feared her as well. Once again, when, you, when you're talking about some power like this, not only do you have power to help people, but it's going to create fear when people are going to think that you have power over them. And that's what slowly started to happen. She slowly over time started becoming banned from the history and Louisiana itself. The people knew her more as an oracle because she claimed she could see the future and she was able to help people and steer them on the correct path so that they felt like they were more in control. Now, the darker side of Marie Laveau is she was known to create, she was known to do exorcisms on people and she was also known to do sacrifices because that is part of hoodoo voodoo tradition and culture. Apparently, quote, a local newspaper referred to her once as the notorious hag who reigns over the ignorant superstitions as the queen of the voodoos. So she had some bad press too, like people knew about her and they knew who she was, they knew what she did and she knew she was capable, but that created the fear. Now, once again though, going back to her Catholic roots, she was also said that she could touch people and heal them, so she was a healer. And she did so much humanitarian work. She helped people that were sick. She helped people that were um, in a really low point in their life and she could help them get them back on track. And she devoted a lot of her time to go and pray and help people that really wanted to change their lives, such as prisoners or death row inmates. She sometimes would even go into the local hospitals and pray over people and they would heal. Now in 1875, Marie Laveau announced that she was going to be retiring from her voodoo roots. 1875 was the last actual performance that people saw her in the streets before she had, you know, pulled the reign of voodoo queen of Louisiana. But you know, like a typical voodoo queen, she never actually retired. She was still practicing, but you know, she's older now and basically became very picky with who her clientele was and who she would allow in her home now that she's like becoming more of a fragile age. On June 15th of 1881, she died peacefully in her home. She was 86 years old. Now, once she died, word spread and everybody panicked because, you know, the famous voodoo priestess is now dead. But it kind of shocked some people because some people were like, wait a second, they were talking crap about her when she was alive. Why are they now going to turn around and say she was one of the most humanitarian people you've ever seen? Once again, with power comes fear. She was even reported from New York Times. New York Times reporter said she was the most glorious terms of a saintly figure who nursed the sick and prayed for the disease and condemned the bad. Marie Laveau was buried in the St. Louis Cemetery. Now, if you've ever seen online how Louisiana grave slots are, they are above um, like 
land. And the reason they're above land is because Louisiana sits below sea level. So if it does get a tsunami or a hurricane, they've had it happen before where the graves will actually float up from the soil and there'll be dead bodies floating around everywhere. So they're actually cement gravestones now that are above ground and they can't be swept away, which is terrifying to think about. Marie Laveau is the number one tomb in Louisiana that is visited. It is claimed if you go up to her headstone, which is a massive concrete like block, and if you put three X's on her tombstone, she will still grant your wishes or heals in the afterlife. To this day, it is decorated with hearts, pentagrams, poetry, and lots of love from people that still worship the voodoo queen to this day. So now Marie II, which was her daughter, she was born February 2nd of 1827. It was never known that her mother maybe pushed her ideologies off onto her daughter or if her daughter actually wanted to pick them up for herself. So Marie II did decide to follow in her mother's footsteps. But the weird thing was with this is that it, it kind of turns a darker route. Marie II was known for kind of doing the darker magics rather than her mother did where her mother was really wanting to heal the sick and she kind of felt like she'd been sent to earth to um, help people rather than hinder them. But her daughter took a little bit more of a sinister turn. So once her daughter started practicing hoodoo and voodoo, um, her daughter was the one that was known as the darker voodoo priestess. So to this day, people tend to get both of them mixed up because they're both named Marie. So when people talk about dark or bad voodoo hoodoo, they, they're thinking of her daughter. When they're talking about good hoodoo voodoo, they're talking about Marie Laveau, the mother, and she was the one that was doing like the saintly acts. I mean, Marie Laveau, this is for her, you know what I mean? Like, we're going all voodoo priests out here. Yes, what do you think, yeah? So I got, this is um, Breakup 16 Hour Proof Eyeliner. We'll see about that. This is an ultra black. I think this is new, actually. So this is, I haven't used this yet. It's definitely an ink pen. It looks pretty good. So fingers crossed, we're gonna use this. So her daughter did want to go on and become the next big voodoo priestess, but unfortunately she never ever lived up to her, mo her mother's roots. She never did. And her daughter liked to trigger fear. This liner is hard to use. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it, but whoa. If you're not like a pro with eyeliner, like this could be dangerous. Well, I got my eyeliner on. It just took four and a half years. I'm gonna go in with some more gold glitter because like once again, voodoo priestess, I'm gonna be extra for you, Marie. This is for you, boo-boo. So basically the town became afraid of her daughter because she was practicing more of the dark voodoo magic than her mother was. So you could say in a way her daughter tarnished her image a little bit but her daughter has just as many people visit her graves. So Marie Laveau is like the most popular to go visit. Her daughter is the second to most popular to go visit in New Orleans and still pay tribute to the voodoo queens of New Orleans. So why do people go? They go to ask for gifts. They want to be close to the voodoo queens. They want to be healed. Um, people really truly believe that they're still being healed by them in the afterlife. So there are multiple sites of the voodoo queen being seen in Louisiana. And the sightings are a woman with light caramel skin, a white flowing dress, and she has a turban in her hair. She's seen at her previous address where her house used to lay. It's no longer there, it was torn down. But she's seen all over the French Quarter. Um, it's claimed that her spirit never really crossed over because she's still doing her spiritual magic work in downtown French Quarter of Louisiana weird I just heard like a heard like a bird in here and then I heard like a mm-hmm and then like a cracking noise so it would be interesting if I if I caught that on camera it's weird I just heard like a heard like a bird in here it's weird I just heard like a heard like a bird in here Marie, girl, are you here? Are you here, boo? Read, I just heard a tap at my window. Hmm. 
is the bird again. Do you guys hear that? It's like in the room with me. Okay. There's all kinds of noises going on in here right now. If this is Marie Laveau's spirit, I have to say that it does not feel dark at all. Like not even in the slightest. This is very positive energy and I honestly it does feel very saintly energy. Marie girl, let me help me get my show signed, boo. I need to be on Netflix if you could get Ghost Girl Diary signed Netflix, boo. I appreciate your faith. We chopped top Native American. I'm, I'm Cherokee. You gotta stick together, boo. So I have um a primer in coconut. Oh my god, I hope to God we don't have another. Okay, it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell chemically. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. This it, I threw on a little bit of Kylie lip liner, but this is color Late Night um, by Wet n Wild, and it's more of like a it's like a high high shine gloss versus like a matte 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 lip. I kind of made it a little bit lighter, and I'm gonna go in with. I have Wet n Wild. This is one of my favorites. This is my personality in one. It's either completely dark or like pale. That's all I wear. Nothing really in between. So yeah, if you don't like dark makeup looks, sorry boo boo, then my channel is probably not for you. You know what I'm saying? So once again, because we are, um, you know, naming the voodoo priestess of Marie Laveau, of course we have to be a little bit extra today. So I'm going to take these crystals that I got from Joann's and I'm going to be extra. Still thinking something might be a little off. What do you guys think? Anything? That ah, is exactly what was wrong. So that concludes my video on uh, the Voodoo Priestess of Louisiana and um, Wet n Wild. So first of all, let's let's talk about Wet n Wild for a second. Definitely love all of the eye products. Totally sold on those. Love the highlighters. I've been a huge fan of their highlighters for forever. Now, as far as the face products, they didn't work for me. Obviously, I, I started to get some sort of a weird reaction to it. Don't know what it was. Um, did I happen to get a bad batch of products? Maybe. Now, the last question I have for you guys is who wants to go with me to Louisiana to visit Marie Laveau's grave? Please make sure you guys give my video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please leave me lots of love and comments below with anything you want to see next. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Do you think Marie Laveau was actually in my office? She's one of those dead people that I would actually want to be friends with. Like, Marie, will you be my friend?